So the reason that bucket wasn't running is look at the hose. Hi everybody, it's Robbie from Southern California and I came here chasing a woodpecker. He's in the tree. I can see him, but I really can't get good footage of him on the camera because he's, he's playing hide and go seek with me. So I climbed up this trail that Gary made a while back and cleared and I was looking at the ground. You see all this? This is leaves. Leaves that these trees are dropping everywhere, all these different trees. We've got an old pepper tree here, and then we've got an olive tree here, and a ficus tree that brings a lot of birds, this tree, because it has a berry and seeds that they come and eat in the spring. But look at all the leaves. Even rocks, look at this rock. This rock just falls apart, it's like shale, look at this. And it's got so many minerals in it. This rock too fascinates me. Because what I'm going to be doing this year, along with my chair garden, my totes, my container gardening, flower pots, is I'm going to be growing a lot in buckets. And that is why all these leaves fascinate me. All these leaves on the ground could be my future soil. I mean, look what's going on right now. You stop, let's try to step back and take a look at this. What is going on here is the trees, as we're going into winter, are losing their leaves. Well, they're not gonna grow in the winter. They could here if they were the right type of tree, but they're not going to because even though today is a beautiful day, it's cold. Let's walk around, step back so you can see, and I can talk about what's going on. I love watching nature. Nature is very important to me. They're losing their leaves for multiple reasons. They're losing their leaves, well, because they don't need them. They're not going to be growing in the winter. There's a trail down to Gary's garden. And they're losing their leaves to cover the ground to protect the roots and the plants. And they're losing their leaves to produce more soil. Well, Southern California is not that bad, so it's not going to hurt if I take some of the leaves. And I'm not going to take that many because, of course, I've got my vegetable garden I take from. So I'm going to show you in the spring as we start going what I'm going to be doing with the buckets. But I just took a walk, like I said, to go chase a woodpecker. And I wanted to see if it was a regular woodpecker, the nettles we have, which it was. Because I did a video a while back and I didn't really pay that much attention to it until recently. And I looked at it and thought, son of a gun, I captured a red-breasted sapsucker. It sounds like a joke. It really does. To me, when you read that name, it sounds like you're kidding. It's a big joke. But I captured a red-breasted sapsucker. And I thought I was looking at a regular woodpecker that I see all the time. So that's why I wanted to double check and see what it is. See all the leaves? They're just falling. This is what creates topsoil. And this is why when you go through and you take your, your land around your home or wherever and you rake it clean and you clean it up, well, you are actually removing your new fresh topsoil that it will break it down to. Like I always say about my composting in place. You know how I throw things in containers and you can do it in the ground too. Anything on the top, the very top, isn't going to break down. But anything underneath, because it holds moisture, it holds water and water is life, that's what's the microbes and all that's gonna go, and insects and everything are gonna go and live in there and break it down. But on the top, see how dry it is? Even if it rains, it dries really quick as soon as the sun comes out. The top is just protecting what's going on underneath. Well, we can do that when we're doing container gardening or even in the ground. You can compost in place in the ground too, I do that. So I just was looking at those leaves. I hiked over there and thought, this is just fascinating. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start collecting things from the garden, like my chair garden. All this is going going to be pulling a lot of this down. I mean, it's going to grow flowers, and yes, I can eat the flowers, I know. But I can compost that. That's going to make terrific soil. 
just like I reuse my water, well, I'm going to reuse my plants, the plants that aren't producing anything. I'm going to reuse that, and that includes the tomato plants. They are struggling so much with the weather because it's so cold. This is all my future soil. So whatever hits the ground I don't pick up is fine. I can take off the ground at any time, come through here with a rake or get on my hands and knees or a shovel and just take what I want. But, but it is, you know, the tomatoes are struggling because tomatoes need a lot of sun. Yes, you can grow some tomato plants in the house as long as it's got a sunny window, but here it gets a lot of shade. And every tomato plant is different. Keep that in mind. All tomato plants are different. Some like more sun than others. Some will do fine in the cold. Some will do better in the heat. Let me go sit down for a minute. Look at my chairs. Yes, brought out the paint cam one day to test the color. I like this color, $2 for a quart. So I just kind of hit it with paint and I hit a flower pot with paint. So what I'm going to do is start using buckets. Now why buckets? Why buckets? Buckets are smaller. You're not going to get as much out of a bucket as you would with a container. Now these 18 gallon containers, and my daughter likes the bigger ones, and a lot of you like bigger ones. I have whatever I bought at the thrift stores. I have big ones, and the ones this year, due to, you know, money-wise, being frugal with money, I went ahead and bought a lot of containers online for $5 that were 18 gallons, and they will be fine. I can grow, I can grow and these are 18 gallon containers you're looking at, at right now. Those are all 18. I can grow two squash. I can grow tomato plants in there, one or two tomato plants. I could grow a squash plant with, let's say, garlic chives or parsley. You can change up and have different things going on. But yes, you do have room to do quite a bit. Fill them up and then put your seeds on the top or your plants on the top and go for it. With a bucket, you are limited. It's only five gallons, unless you're getting a bigger bucket. But I'm only dealing right now with five gallon buckets. So with the, oh, I see a hummingbird going up in the air. Um, with a five gallon bucket, you are absolutely limited. You're not gonna be able to really grow more than one zucchini plant in it, which is fine. If you get one good zucchini plant, you can get tons of zucchini off of one plant. And that is good, I like that. I really like the idea of getting one zucchini plant. And here's the thing I really like. It's got handles, they're lightweight, you pick them up and you move them. So if I would have had instead of a chair garden here, let's say I would have had buckets. I could have easily picked up the buckets. It's got a handle because 18 gallons is heavy. You're not gonna be picking these totes up. I'd have to empty out. For me, physically, probably em empty out a good half of that soil in there and then move it. And I was not gonna bother with that. I talked about that. No reason to move my chair garden. It's perfectly fine where it's at. We're gonna hit the shortest day soon and then the days will get longer. And then this beautiful pepper tree that all the birds nest in, the hummingbirds, goldfinches, mockingbirds, hawks, everybody nests in here, even ravens have. The sun will be up above it and it will be shining all on the property and all this will get plenty of sun. So I am not going to move everything to try to do anything. But had I had buckets on that, or buckets on the ground just would have grabbed them, moved them in a sunnier location and they would have continued to grow. So you're limited to one plant per bucket if it's a large plant. Multiple plants if you're doing smaller plants. You could do carrots and radishes and different types of onions and whatever you want to grow in there, different herbs, you know, those are smaller plants. You can get a few different plants in there. You overcrowd too much and your plants stay small. I've showed you that on the lettuce. Overcrowded plants will simply don't get that big. Not vegetable plants, not usually. They can, if you want to go buy a lot of plant food, and this is what a lot of farmers do, and you want to buy a lot of plant food and heavily feed them with whatever chemicals or any type of plant food you want, you may be able to get some size on them. So you can fool them where they think they've got a lot of food in there and they, they're constantly getting fed. And you can fool some plants to make them bigger, but see, I want to have mine natural. Natural for multiple reasons. First of all, it's cheaper. Now I should say, first of all, it's healthier, but it's cheaper. I'm making my own plant food 
from what I showed you, all the leaves and the plants that were here. Kitchen scraps are plants. Unless you're adding in bones and chicken meat and egg, you know, and different things like that, which you can, some people do. I periodically will throw in some chicken bones, but I tend not to because I don't want to bring critters to them. That tends to bring more critters, but you most certainly can. If you've got a lid or you don't have that issue and you don't have dogs, you most certainly can add in almost anything you want. Hot dogs and all that, leftover hot dogs in the fridge that went bad or something, you can add all that. It will break down. So there's no question all that will absolutely break down and make soil. The question you have to ask yourself is if you want to deal with what it could bring. Your critters in your yard don't generally, I say that loosely, don't generally go to rotting, I'm going to call the, use the word rotting vegetable matter. They're looking more for what they smell and meat will be quite strong and that's what they're coming for, what they smell. So that's why I don't have a problem with putting the totes out. All kinds of kitchen scraps, food matter. I mean, even if you had old potato salad, stuff like that, they're not really coming to that. They're coming more to the meat. They're more attracted to meat. But again, keep in mind, there's no question it will break down. Anything that was alive will break down. So going back to buckets. I really like the idea of buckets. That is not taking away from anything I'm doing here. I'm adding buckets. And the reason I'm adding buckets is I can move them around. Now, sometimes I have to get things off the ground and that's why I like my chair garden. If you've got dogs, you've got animals running the yard, you do kind of want to lift them up. And when you get them off the ground, you're not going to have your dog lifting his leg on your food and then having to make sure you wash it real good and things like that. They're still working on that house up there. Single story house, they tell me. I said, how in the world did that, the single story house end up three stories? And they told me, well, we'd only count the front of the house. The front of the house is single story. We don't care what they do in the back. That was an interesting answer. But anyways, that's their thing. I can't deal with that. And I'm just glad that I've got trees here. So with the buckets, I can move them and fill them and clean. I'm gonna take a walk. I can actually, clean my property. So I can walk around here with a bucket. And instead of pulling everything out, putting it in a bucket, and then setting it aside and waiting to see what I'm gonna do with it, I can pull it out, everything, what I want. Let's say I want to clean up in here. I can pull all these leaves out and pick up a bucket, you know, and throw it in there. Yeah, I'm not gonna eat that. Throw that in a bucket. Now, when I toss it in a five gallon bucket, it's easy because it's one step. It is only one thing I'm going to do and I'm going to put it in the bucket. And if I'm gonna grow in the bucket, I'm done. I'm completely done. I put it in the bucket. I continue to fill it with leaves. And this is where I'm gonna save a lot of money. This is no joke. I'm going to save money and anybody that wants to do this is going to save money. So I load the bucket up full of leaves, small branches, rotting food matter that didn't get picked or didn't ripen right. See back there I probably have some squash that did not ripen right. And I load the bucket up with it and then if I want to plant in it right now but it's winter, let's say I'm not, I just sit the bucket. Make sure you have drain holes. You don't want it to fill up on a rainy day and be sitting with slosh in there. You want it, you want it to be wet, but you don't want it underwater. You're not creating a river or a lake. So I'm gonna put holes in all my buckets. You can put holes on the very bottom or you can put holes about an inch up from the bottom. Whatever works best for you. Here in Southern California, we have not had any rain since May, I think they said we had one day of rain. Gary's bees look cold, but they're in there. See, let's look at the bees real quick. Busy as a bee. No, no, we don't get any honey. There's no way to get in there and don't ask Gary to get in there because he probably would try. So, anyways, you make sure you have holes so everything drains well. And 
Whatever you fill up in the bucket is going to collapse. It's going to... Co oh, a rabbit just ran by. It's going to collapse and go down, so you'll have less. So keep that in mind if you decide to grow in it right away. He's hiding in the bushes somewhere. I only saw the tail end of it, the white tail. All right. So I want to start filling up buckets and cleaning up my yard because I do have a lot of brown leaves and things I don't need. And I'm not going to take away from trees that need. There's no reason for me to do that. I'm going to load up buckets, make sure the buckets have holes. Come spring, I am going to come back to those buckets and if I want to add some more kitchen scraps to it, that's fine. If I don't, that's fine too. But on the top, I am going to put some potting soil. I like potting soil because potting soil over garden soil, you can buy them both. There is a difference. Potting soil holds water better. They put things in it to make it hold water. Garden soil is to improve your garden, to add some food because they do add food to the garden soil. And that's what that does. So for me, I'm using a container, a bucket's a container. I go ahead and I use potting soil. I sometimes buy the best if I go into the store. And that's a loquat tree right there. No loquats right now. But if I go into the store and they've got some busted bags, I can ask. They'll sell you that for half price to 75% off because they want them out. So I have bought the best. I bought Dr. Earth's. That was really good and expensive for 75% off ones. So you can go through and buy whatever you want. Here's my garden. When I got to clean up, that's my garden up there. And we're now by Gary's garden. But I will say this year has been tough. It's been tough for everybody. I know that or most people. So I was going and buying myself one of the cheaper brands, but not bad. I wouldn't go buy a bag of steer manure that costs a dollar because, well, if that's coming off the farms, let's say the dairy farms or whatever farms, you don't know what they're feeding the cattle or the steer. And if they're feeding a lot of chemicals and hormones and stuff, that's going to be in the soil. I don't want that. So what I do is I just buy plain old cheap potting soil, which basically is exactly what's in my bucket read the labels it's amazing so what's in the bucket the bucket's got all your leaves and matter plant matter right well your potting soil and your garden soil is plant matter but they broke it down already for you it's completely broke down it is ready to grow and in some cases they do add some plant food in there i personally am not going to worry right now if it's organic or not because i'm adding my own organic materials in there but you can add in whatever you want and if you don't want to buy something that's not organic you buy what you want to buy everybody has to do it the way it will work best for them keep that in mind if you've got the money and you want to buy organic and you feel it's worth it oh i didn't even know we had a yellow bucket look at that he's got a yellow bucket i wonder if he knew what's in here let's look let's see what's in here Oh, he's got water in there. I don't know what he's doing. He must have been feeding the papaya. And he must have stopped. I don't know. We'll have to ask him one day. But anyways, let's go in his garden. He's not here. I don't think he's here. Let's see if we can get him. The thing is, you've got to buy what you can afford. I cannot afford to go spend $20 to $35 for a small bag of potting soil right now. I just can't do it. I'm sorry. It's not going to work for me. I need to pay my bills. I work hard enough, so I feel like I work 24 hours a day. I rarely get sleep. So the thing is, I buy what I can afford, and that's what you have to do. You have to buy what you can afford or what you want to buy. So I'm buying a cheaper brand, usually on sale. It's worked perfect for me because that is only what I'm starting with. Because as the plants are growing, all those leaves that I've collected, all of them are breaking down already. Like Gary, collecting leaves here. All this is gonna be soil. Now, if you dug this through, if he's watering this, and you dug that through, you would find halfway through, it's already looking like compost, broken down compost, because it breaks down quick. The top won't, and I don't know when he put this in here, so I can't. No, it's warm, and it's soft. It's gonna be broke down. I would, if I was trying to get it to break down quicker, grab some wood chips or some native soil, because that seems to really help. 
and then that will help break it down. So you've got to do what works for you. That's the whole idea of gardening. And you really do, I'm going to insist on this, make it as easy as possible where you're not breaking your back doing it because if you break your back doing it and it's exhausting and you come in and you've had it you're not going ooh, you're not going to continue to do it you just won't it just eventually you'll say no too much work it's not working i can't do it i make such a good coleslaw out of this now that i'm going to have to share that with you exactly how i do it i've tried all kinds of things with this is a tree colored and you cannot buy seeds for it. If somebody sells you seeds, it will grow into some sort of colored, but not necessarily tree colored. This is only propagated by cuttings if you want the exact plant, because it was designed. This is a designer plant, but it's still organic and it's still not gmo So going back to what I was saying, is you want to make it easy so you enjoy doing it. You want gardening not to be stressful. And remember, if a plant dies, you've now created some more soil for yourself. If you're creating more soil than plants, you'll get it, it will work. You'll eventually get it right, believe you me. I had a black thumb too once. And it's also by interest. If you've got an interest, you can grow anything. I know somebody that couldn't grow a thing. She kept telling me, I can't grow anything. But the interest came in. Oh, he's got a project there. And be, I'll sit for a minute. And because the interest is there, she's growing all kinds of stuff now. Stuff I can't even believe she's growing. Everything. So that's the thing. Keep your garden easy and do what works best for you. I don't care what anybody says. You have to do what works best for you. And here Gary's got containers in the ground. So they're part way in the ground, which is really good. You know, now the thing is, if you've got a lot of tree roots, like pepper trees, pine trees, they really will become invasive and attack that. And then your plants could die back and you'll be wondering, gee, I'm watering and I'm taking care of it. What happened? Well, the roots got in there and basically some of these plants will literally kill other plants so they can rob all the water. And that can happen. Another thing that can happen, keep this in mind with stable type of containers in other words you can't move them the holes are on the bottom is sometimes even ants get in there you won't have a gopher problem with this but ants get in there and they'll build their home and you won't even know they're in there they've got their trail somewhere else and they'll go in there and they'll redirect all the water that you're watering that plant for you know to keep it alive and they're redirecting the water where they want and you're watering wondering what in the world is going on and I have found ants have done that that's why I poked the dickens out of the containers when I know they're in there. I know a lot of people have said soak them and that is one thing soaking is very good if, but how in the world would you pick that container up? You take a rod, a skinny rod, and poke the dickens out of it, fill it up with water and what you've done is you've taken their beautiful little highways they've made in there and their tunnels, you've pierced them and then they fill with water and if you do it two or three times they're sick of you and they're gonna leave. So that's the way of getting rid of ants. But roots are a big thing. Roots will come and kill a lot of plants. But with buckets, this is what I was talking about, buckets, they're small enough to grow, let's say, one. You guessed it. I had to hike back up to the house because my battery went flat. And I wasn't even planning on doing any video. I just had my camera in hand. Look at that. That's my beautiful cabbage that needs a little water. But I'll wait till the sun is away. But it was this, what I was saying is in a bucket, you can grow one beautiful green Swiss chart or red Swiss chart or anything you want. That's what's so wonderful about a bucket. And you think, well, it's only one. The biggest, greatest thing is you pick up that handle and you move it. So if you want to grow it somewhere else and you want to you know, chase the sun or leave the sun, let's say in the summer you want to grow some lettuce. I will tell you, you want a great big lettuce? Get some romaine lettuce seeds. Look at this. Get some romaine lettuce seeds. Throw, throw them somewhere, grow them, and transplant one or two in a bucket. A five gallon bucket. I'm gonna sit here for a minute. I'm not hiking back to Gary's garden. My garden's a mess. He's moved everything. My poor purple tree colored. Um, you will get really big lettuce. You plant 
lettuce in a small container, your lettuce will be compact. It's Kind of like putting a goldfish in a small bowl. They used to say, put a goldfish in a bowl and it stays small. Well, you put your lettuce in a smaller container and you get small, compact lettuce. You put it in a great big bucket and your lettuce will get really big, really tall and big leaves. But let me tell you, either way is good. I mean, I've got lettuce growing now on my windowsill. I've got lettuce growing out the window on an old planter box that was put there. I'm growing compact lettuce. They're a little bit bigger than my hand, but I'll tell you, there's nothing better than reaching out the window, grabbing a piece of lettuce and putting it in a sandwich or wrapping some cheese or something in it or making tacos. I, I'm not using the whole lettuce. I'm not gonna, you know, destroy the lettuce. I'm taking the outer leaves and I'm using the lettuce and it works out perfect. So there's nothing really better. I should sit in my garden where the birds are. There's really nothing better than having lettuce growing in a bucket. Now, if you don't mind it small, you can put in a five gallon bucket, let's say three lettuce. They just may not get as big, but they might. If they feel they've got a whole lot of nutrients in it, then they might get really big. And that's what I was saying with a bucket, I can, I'm going to go around this yard when Gary's through in here and I'm going to clean up and take all the yellow leaves and browning leaves. The only thing I won't put in here is this and that is mint because even though the mint may look dead there might be a few pieces in there and mint even if it gets buried to the bottom they'll find their way up. They'll start to grow, they'll set root and then the plant will wiggle its way through the leaves to the top and before you know it you have a bucket full of mint which is good if you want mint, but if you don't want mint, you'll have mint. So that's the only thing I really won't put in there is mint or Bermuda type grass. Otherwise, everything else is pretty much, you're good to go unless you, it's a real invasive plant. But mint will grow no matter what, even if it ends up on the bottom. A lot of times they'll come out of the bottom holes. If you've composted mint, you've got holes on the bottom of your tote and they're, let's say, a little higher like this, you'll see mint growing out. Sometimes a piece might get in there or you may have thrown some mint in there and forgot and it will grow out. But otherwise, you clean up the yard and then you decide what you're gonna grow in there. If you're gonna grow lettuce, then you only need, let's say, oh, I don't know, about four inches, if that, of potting soil on the top. If you're gonna grow carrots or, yeah, let's say carrots, or something that gets kind of big, you know, like a kohlrabi or big radishes, then you're gonna want six or seven inches of potting soil on the top of a bucket because you don't, you want to make sure that it can grow straight down into the bucket and not be fighting with your leaves in case it grows that quick and your leaves and your branches didn't grow, you'll end up with a carrot going down like that and they'll be all different sizes. Look at that. Turkey vultures. But, you know, that's the only thing. You think about what you want to plant in there. And you want to put blueberry plants in each bucket? Well, then you don't have to worry too, too much, you know. Basically, if you're going to put something, you know, like tree collard, you won't need that much. Really, four or five inches on the top and plant some collard in there or, or kale. And as it's growing, it, everything's going to break down and all that new soil will be created. It is just wonderful, a bucket, and you can pick it up and move it. Now, a tree collard in there is going to be really big. This one that's tipping is in a big, big flower pot, kind of as big as a five-gallon bucket and it's already well overgrown. But it won't matter if I wanted to cut it down and do cuttings on it, and we'll get into cuttings another time too. So it's kind of like, why do I like buckets? I like buckets because I can take a bucket, clean up my yard, it's a one-time thing, I'm putting everything in there and I'm leaving it in there. Holes on the bottom or the side, it doesn't matter. And then I'm planting in it when I'm ready. I can plant now and add soil and plant in it right away, or I can wait till spring. And once I wait till spring, it might settle a little bit, which is fine. I can add some more leaves, or I could just put the potting soil in there and it is good to go. So either way, I don't have to worry about it or move it. But the other thing is, if you're gonna set up totes and you've collected all that in the bucket, you can also, of course, take whatever you collected if you don't want to plant in the bucket right away and dump all that into a tote. And then you've got all that wonderful matter you collected and just take, take it, dump it, and you can start growing in it right away. So that's just another way of doing it. No, my neighbor does not have horses. Look at this. You want to see this? 
They sure do look like horses, don't they? They are beautiful. There's two of them. They are gorgeous. Great Danes. So that's why I like buckets, because you can do a lot with buckets. Like I said, that's a new thing. Well, it's not too new. I've been growing in buckets, but that's my new big thing. I think what happened was when I found a company that had at such a great price, all these colors is when I went wild. I've always liked color. A person that likes art, I love art. I really don't have a favorite color. Color to me is beautiful. I love color. And when it's so colorful, it just makes me feel good. I, I really love all different colors. Now in the front yard, you'll say, wait a minute, your front yard is all gray. It is. I want it to be subdued. You know, just let it be quiet. It's just this easy, natural, and I went with gray. And then my chair garden, I went with colors, and the new one's even going to have more colors. So it depends on my mood. It also depends on where I'm setting up my garden. So we're going to talk a lot about buckets. Now the other thing, let's see, what else can I tell you great about a bucket? If you've got the holes on the bottom, you can, and it doesn't matter again if it's on the side toward, towards the bottom, but if you had it on the bottom and you're watering your bucket, everything underneath is going to catch that water if it's sitting on the ground. This is just an old fountain I've got to redo. And that soil underneath, this is probably full of water and we can't see. Yeah, it's full. Let's see if we can move this a little. See that? I now have new soil. That is beautiful. I can take that soil and use that straight in like potting soil. It is beautiful. It's all broke down. Just because the water has been under there and nature broke it down into just beautiful soil. So you've got that option to pick up the bucket later on and collect shovels and shovels of beautiful soil made in your own yard. The other option is when you have holes that are just above and let's say you're growing who knows, anything, squash, peppers, tomatoes, whatever, in the ground, you take a bucket that you've collected all those leaves and everything in, and then what you do is you take them and sit them not far, not on top of, but not far from the plants you're growing in the ground, and your plants are going to take off. That's why I've got the squash that grew. The zu these zucchinis came, are growing in the ground, and they're growing right next to a tote and they look like watermelons because they were sitting next to a tote that was full of leaves and everything from my garden and every day or whenever I watered that container it was you know seeping out the water and it was a constant food source for the zucchini we can go take a walk I think that's still there with them having a constant food source that plant the the fruit it produced on it was unbelievable just um, it was just so it's still there i've been picking the small i didn't want to deal with such a big big zucchini if i don't pick it i can collect the seeds in the spring or you know early in the year or i can just pick it anytime if you leave it too long normally on the plant the the skin will stay soft but now that it's been really on there for months and months and months the skin's probably hard and it's probably best to take these squash cut them up and bake them but this these squash here that are dying back and they're still alive they're growing next to the totes and that's what your bucket can do look at this this is unbelievable and look it is still growing zucchini i've been taking the small ones look at the size of this there they weigh a ton and that's not being eaten that's worn off that's just worn off they weigh a ton. I can't even lift them. Oh my God. I can't even lift them. The see where it's planted next to the container and see the holes? This plant here, and that's why it's still producing in the winter. This plant here is being constantly fed by that tote. Because no matter what, even though the leaves were collected last spring, what, nine months ago, it is still constantly feeding. It's a, it's a tea. It's a compost tea that I don't even have to deal with, and it's feeding this plant. And though it's dealing with powdery mildew and everything, look at the new leaves. Look at the fruit. 
It's unbelievable. Same with those down there. I've been picking these bigger fruit. There, this is a hybrid. Look at the color of the squash, but look at the size of it. Look how big it is. Again, it's still trying to grow. This spring, it will take off if I don't pick it. I'll probably leave it. Look how skinny the trunk is, and look where it is. Again, it's being fed by that tote. And that's the whole idea of the buckets. You can take these buckets, like that blue one there on the chair, I've collected all kinds of stuff, you know, the, the leaves that are no good. You collect all this stuff, all this. It's all gonna go back to the soil. All this, once it turns brown, it doesn't matter what the leaves are. It doesn't matter if it, look at this. It doesn't matter if it's vegetable leaves. It doesn't matter if it's maple leaves. It doesn't matter what kind of leaves there are. I even got leaves from my hibiscus. It turns into soil. So you can use a bucket for so many things. Not only growing in it, but double duty, composting in place, as well as feeding other plants. Now I didn't know what I wanted to plant in this bucket. So I went ahead and took a floral pot and I put those lettuce in there. This is what you probably saw me do a while ago. And I put some little lettuce in there. Now what's coming up here, I know what that is, see? That's Swiss chard. I actually tossed some seeds in there. Probably shouldn't do that, but I did because I may want to move some Swiss chard. So, but look at this, this is beautiful. Now there's three in here. So they'll grow a little slower because there's three, but I don't care. They're taking off. And then, I don't even have to go look for water. Look what I do. I just water it back. It doesn't matter how much water I put in there. Now, here's the thing. Let's put this back here. It's underneath. So the water's coming out of here. It's going, it's going from here. Let me back up. It's going from here into this bucket that I've filled up with stuff from the garden. It's watering that bucket, because remember, we have to remember, water is life. You have to have water. The bucket's breaking down, so I can either plant in it whenever I want, or I could take that bucket and dump it in a tote if I wanted to. But in the meantime, the water is gonna run out the bottom. Okay. Fill up back there, and then I just water my lettuce again. So there's a lot of different ways we can garden. It's so fun, it is so fun. I think, I still think my chair garden, I think you're sick of hearing me say that. My chair garden is my favorite. So now I've taken you for a walk around the yard. And this is going to be really long of just me talking. And so many of you said, I don't like the short ones. And then I get the people that, why are you talking so much? We don't want to hear the long ones. We don't want to hear you. So they shouldn't watch it. <laughs> they want to hear a long one. This is for you that want to just hear me chit chat. And today I'm chit chatting about buckets. We will get into where I got the buckets, the colors that they have. I took pretty much every color that they had. I kept, um, I kept down on the white because I have a lot of white, but they also had black. I bought some black. I did not buy any, they had natural. A natural I think is an off white. They had something else they had, I can't remember. Gray, I had one gray already. See, I can hear the water dripping out of that now. And I think it's just going to be fun. I'm trying to think of how I want to set it up. As far as Gary's fountains, you know, down there, the bathtub and the ponds he's making, I should say, I'm going to put some solar fountains down there. I'll keep that very natural. I like that because it's got that goofy bear that somebody threw out, my neighbor, and I got that. And we're going to put more plants around that. We'll keep that natural for the birds. And here, we're going to make it more fun. I don't think we'll be having a lot of parties this year coming up and for... 2021 so I'm going to make another chair garden and I want to think of how I want to do the buckets I could put buckets on chairs I could put buckets on the ground I could put them on chairs and take them off and put them on the ground if I want I have to be careful here personally myself because we have a lot of rabbits so if I get too close to the ground and I plant things that they like then I will have an issue with them eating everything that I'm planting. That's why I like having them on the chairs. I have no problems with rabbits there. I have seen the rabbits hopping around, but they cannot get into the chair garden. I've seen squirrels here and they haven't climbed up onto the chairs, which is interesting. 
And then, let's see, what else have I seen in there? I've seen the birds go in there, and they're picking insects off. They probably take a little nip of my greens here and there, and that's okay. But buckets is not, I don't want to say it's my new thing. It's going to be a big thing for me. And like I said, what really did it for me was the colors. When I saw the colors, I just went wild. I thought, wow, it just makes it more exciting, more fun, more interesting, and more versatile because now I can just grab a bucket and walk through the yard, pick up and trim when I want. And I don't have to fill the bucket, you know, right now. It doesn't have to be right this second. It doesn't have to be right away. I can take a week to fill the bucket. I can take hours to fill the bucket. There's a bucket there, a white one. I can just, little by little, I can sit buckets around in different areas if I want and slowly fill them. And then when I'm ready, I'm not planting too much now. I planted my cabbage, but I can grow corn in buckets. Just think, planting a, one corn in every bucket or two corns and putting all the buckets together, Oh my gosh, a field of corn all growing in buckets? This would be so cool. There's so many things you can do. I can experiment and try different types of plants in buckets. I probably would not want to grow a papaya in a bucket because you know how big they get. And we did it already. I did it in the flower pots that I dragged out here. They set root right away. They will bust the bucket if I did that. It would work, but they would bust the bucket. They set their roots in the ground so they're growing in the containers, see? It looks like a black bucket. When I water it, it waters the roots. That's why they do so well. I mean, they do really, really well. I think that's one of the best ways to grow them. None of my papayas are straight in the ground. Isn't that funny? That one broke the pot years ago, but it did not get started in the ground. None of them did. All of them that are doing fabulous and growing fruit, I don't know if that's the secret, started in a pot. So I don't want to break up a bucket. I would put them in a floral pot and as soon as they take off, like like this one, this is a new one from what, I think it's a year old in a floral pot. Let it break the pot and then this one can start to grow. So as far as papaya, I wouldn't grow it in a bucket. You can transplant it, but sometimes you, these plants struggle when you transplant them. So we just left it. And you can tell me all you want how wrong this is. It's wrong, you can't do this. You can't grow papaya in a small flower pot? Oh my gosh, that's terrible. I didn't know I was doing it all wrong. Oh my gosh, well that's the thing. There is no wrong with gardening. Because I could tell you something won't work and then you could turn around and say, ha ha, look what I did. Because you never know what's gonna happen. So the, again, like I was talking, make it easy, make it fun and decide what works best for you. If you've got a big yard, you can go with totes and buckets or whatever you want. You can go in the ground. You can do it always. My daughter is planting in the ground. She's growing in containers. We'll see if she does buckets this year because I wasn't doing buckets like I am now. You know what? I can get her to do buckets. All I have to do is plant something in a bucket and drop it off there. And then she'll be growing in a bucket. Isn't that funny? But even that, you can start a bucket with some plants in it, some beautiful herbs. Let's say you're a pizza person. I'm a pizza person. I make the greatest pizza. Oh my gosh, I love my pizza. That's my opinion. Maybe you don't like it. I love my pizza. I can have in that bucket a sage, a basil, some oregano, all growing in one bucket. You can start all that, make a cute little sign on it, pizza here, and give it for a gift. A five gallon bucket? with your pizza herbs. Oh, there's so many things we can do with a bucket. So let's walk in here and I guess that's it. I have now talked your ear off about buckets. I don't think I have anything in here in a bucket. This year you're going to see changes. And the reason I was crazy, absolutely crazy about the colored buckets, I don't know if you remember, but there's an old video that I made a fountain. I kind of moved things around. I love changing my fountains around. And I made a fountain and I painted the bucket. So there's the bucket. Do you know how much work that was to paint that bucket? Actually, that's not the bucket. Let's swing over here. That's a different bucket. Here's the bucket I took down I'm gonna change. I painted that bucket. Well, no more painting buckets for me. I now am going to use colored buckets. That's gonna be so fun. And they're food grade. Some of them are even marked food grade, but they're uh, two and a two is food grade. So we're good to go on that. 
So we'll get more into buckets, why I like buckets. I'll sit down here for a second. And I'm gonna change this up. Maybe I'll make buckets here. I have to keep buckets in certain areas, like I said, off the ground because of all the rabbits. But otherwise, buckets are just so versatile. I love my containers. I'm gonna plant something in there. And then I love my buckets. And I think, like I said, the bucket is easy to pick up and move. So if you're in an area and your son moves like mine, I can have a lot of stuff growing in there and then come winter, come fall, when the sun moves, I can just pick up some of those buckets and move them to another part of the yard. They're not that heavy. You need a little tiny dolly, then use a little tiny dolly and move them around. But you can easily move a bucket. There are some people that are putting their totes on dollies and moving them around on, on carts and you can do that too. But with the bucket, I, I just, I'm crazy about buckets. So we'll see more and we'll get into more videos on buckets. I can't think of anything else today. It's such a beautiful day. It's actually warming up. I'm in a long sleeve sweater, about ready to change for a little bit and then it's gonna get really cold. The fig tree is still full of leaves. Still full of leaves. And they are hammering away. I hope that house will be done soon. They're working inside, so it'll be quiet. So I think with that, let's look over the fence here. I don't think I've ever taken you over here. Look at this. This is gonna have to go soon. It's really struggling. The trunk is starting to whittle away. That's my big old tree collar, but that's okay. I've got so many cuttings here I have to do. Maybe I'll put them in buckets, but because of the size, they really need to be put in the ground. Now, if you don't have the ground and you want to grow tree, tree collared, there's nothing wrong with growing them in containers and then keep doing cuttings and they'll keep growing. Not much. This is the orange tree and it needs water. I should drop a hose here. And then that's that other citrus tree. There's the moringa, all those pods. And that's what's on the other side. Nothing. I was planting back here a while ago. See, that's the other tree collar that died. I lost one of them. It was over here and it just died. It's in the ground, so something got to it. Could have been insects, could have been age, who knows. But I was planting back there. You probably remember I have some containers back there, but that's the thing. I was planting in an area that became work. I had to go turn on the hose back here and then walk down there and water it. I had to maintain it by hiking down the hill to do it. It was actually, I analyzed, it was too much work. And I didn't need it. I can do it if I didn't have all these other gardens. Absolutely. But as soon as you start making it extra work, you stop. And by nature, I stopped. It was too much work. I thought it doesn't make any sense that I would want to be turning on the hose, which is behind me, and then going over there, making sure the hose is on. Look at the little goldfinch. Oh, there's another one. That's not a goldfinch. Take a look, that's not a goldfinch. I love this. I need to refill this. I gotta get the hose out and just flush this. Look at him. You know why he's so happy? Because the water is so down. See how low the water is? I'm literally standing right next to him. I think it's a little bush tip. Look at that. See the water went down? The water went down because of all the birds taking a bath. They splashed the dickens out of this. And that little tiny bird, he is tiny. He wants it as shallow as possible, and that's what he's looking for. Isn't that something? Usually they're really shy, so I hope he's okay. Usually bush tits are shy. The other birds aren't. But I do have to flush that out. I'm going to get the hose as soon as I'm done here. But anyways, like I said, I was going behind the wall there and taking care of everything, maintaining it and checking on it. I thought, well, why do I need it there? I don't need it. So for now, I'm not. I might plant something like dragon fruit back in there better, and then I don't have to maintain it. I've got all this dragon fruit growing here. So I might put some dragon fruit there, and then I just hit it with water once a week and don't have to think about it. But when the other plants, I was going down there in the summer and watching it, so nah, I don't need it. And I'm working back here. Another place just to dump stuff. And I can take anything I want out of here if I want. And if I don't want, I just cover that up with a layer of anything. I don't even have to cover anything up. Throw some zucchini seeds in here, just the way it is. Take all these buckets out or plant in them, in these tubs. Or I can put buckets in here too. 
plant in there and all this will continue to break down and it will grow. It's amazing. I've showed you, I have taken um, buckets of food matter, you know, broken down kitchen scraps. Well, not even broken down, just dump them in a container. And I didn't even want to grow. And when spring came, everything started growing before I put any soil in it. Yes, that's an avocado tree. That's actually in a pot, so I can move it if I wanted to. See? This is an old bucket. This is, this is just an old bucket. It's just been sitting out in the sun for years. But I started collecting things. But why should I do double duty? So now I'm going to start collecting it in the bucket that I'm going to grow in. And that's going to work better. You know, real quick, and we'll end this. I can't tell you how old this is because I don't know, but I'm going to guess that bucket is over 40 years old. Isn't that beautiful? My dad worked for a pickle factory and he used to get buckets from there. It's made in the USA, which a lot of our buckets still are, but that bucket was my dad's. So that one has a little water fountain and I don't think it's running right now. I may have to get up there and dust it, but that bucket is really, really old. So that's it. Even here, if there, let's say I wanted to cater to a plant. Let's say I wanted to cater to this plant. It's a little tree colored. I could sit a bucket just like that, take care of the bucket, and it will water whatever's next to it and feed the plant next to it. And I don't have to think about anything because it's going to be getting all the greatest food from all the leaf matter breaking down. So I think I have definitely talked your ear off. I had definitely, definitely know this is too long. And now I am going to go get the hose and flush out this fountain for the birds. So with that, have a wonderful, wonderful day. I've got to get back to work. And don't forget to eat what you grow. And if you like our videos, please do subscribe. And if you want, give a thumbs up. It would be nice. And we come out with videos a lot. And come spring, we're going to come out with a ton of videos. So if you have that little bell clicked, then it will let you know. And if we go live, it will let you know too. I hope to do more live. Who knows, I might even do cooking live. You'll get to see how it turns out. So with that, have a great day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye, everybody. That's what happens when the solar panel is getting shade on it. Okay, one more and then I'm done, I think. Good enough for that. I think everything's good enough here. This is one I really need the better hose. This is low hose. I have a hose that has higher power. For now, this will do. Because it's shaded. Oh, now the little bush tit can't come and drink here. He, they have to drink on the top. It's shallow on the top. He was just so excited to find it shallow. Okay, I'm done. Back to work. So the reason that bucket wasn't running is look at the hose. It's full of algae, so I gotta get a long pipe cleaner. Just shove it down there, put it in the sink, wash it out, and this is gonna run. We'll see, I'm gonna go clean it. Now here's the hose. I can't do it with one hand. See the hose? It was full of not just algae, leaves, and it's like a snowball effect. A little bit got in, a little bit more, and then it caked up and it kinda composted in there. It just kinda stood there. Now I'm gonna put this back and this should work. And there's no way for me to, I don't have a tripod, so we're just gonna, I took the hose off, put the hose back onto the pump that I left in there, and we'll see what happens.
Okay, here it is. It's all it needed. It was just the hose that was blocked. And there it is. See what it is? It's an old electric one. And I just used the top part and I put it in here. I can put it any way I want. I don't even have to do it there. If I wanted the wire, water to run more, just do it like that. And the birds will come and take a bath here. Maybe I'll just leave it like that for now. Cool. So if you see an old broken electric one, they have the electric pump. Some are battery. This probably was a battery one. Take it all apart and use the beautiful part they've got. And then you can make your own fountain. And now I have a beautiful fountain bucket with an old thing I picked up at the thrift store for a couple dollars. See, I can put it in here. I can put it in here. Yeah, I'm going to leave it right there. Have it trickle down there. 